What's going on there, YouTube, and welcome back to another comic book video. All right, so we're going to do a newer storyline. We're going to cover Bloodline, the daughter of Blade. Now, when it comes to this particular book, it's all about the idea of Blade having a daughter. Now, we should have saw this coming a mile away. And the reason why, because when it comes to Blade, he really got more popular in the last few years in Marvel Comics. And so with his popularity growing, I felt like sooner or later, they were going to do something huge and different with the character. And of course, they did. They gave him a daughter. But then the question is, okay, she looks like she's 16 years old, maybe 17 years old. Where has she been? Has Blade known the entire time? And if he did, once again, where was she? Because I felt like over the years, Blade would actually mention the idea if he had a child. And so this book right here is going to tell us where she is at, who the character is, and what kind of powers she may have. And so getting into today's video, we actually pick up with a flashback takes place years ago where we do get our introduction to the daughter of Blade, and that would be Brielle. Now when it comes to Brielle, we can tell that she's a very young, happy girl, that she loves sports a lot, that she wants to play all different kinds of sports. Now when it comes to this flashback, we do get the idea that when it comes to Brielle, she has no idea who her father is and the reason why I'm saying that because well you have Brielle find a photo of her father now I do want to mention one thing real quick when it comes to Brielle's mother it's not like she hates Blade at all it's really more about the idea of protecting Brielle from his world and so it tells us right off the bat that she has a lot of love and respect for Blade to understand that his life is just too dangerous for their daughter. And so she's better off not knowing who he is. Either way, you have Brielle find a picture of her father, but her mother does not tell her anything at all when it comes to Blade. And so getting into the present day, we actually pick up with Brielle and also her mom in the principal office. Now, the reason why, because the school got worried because Brielle had just dropped all her sport activities that she does after school. So softball, basketball, all those different things. And so for the school, it's kind of like a red flag. Because most times if a kid does that, that means that child is most likely going through something. Now, with that being said, they did call in her mother. And when it comes to Brielle's mom, it's more of, hey, I know my daughter had just dropped all her sport activities, but she told me, like she told you, that she is trying to focus more on her studies, more on her books, rather than sports. Now, we already know, when it comes to Brielle, she has something else up her sleeve, but unfortunately, we have no idea what that is. Either way, when it comes to Brielle's mom, she ends the meeting to take her daughter out to eat. Now, when they do get some food, it's also Brielle's mom wanting to know, why did you quit all your sport activities? Like, what are you trying to achieve? Yes, you may tell me that you are trying to, you know, focus more on your studies, but at the same time, I feel like there's something else going on. If there's not, then what are you going to do with all that extra free time? Now, when it comes to Brielle, she does not tell her mom nor us what in the world is currently going on. Either way, her mom does not budge. She's kind of like, you know what, sooner or later you're going to tell me. But for right now, I will let it slide. I'm telling you right now, sooner or later, you got to tell me what in the world is going on with you. Now, while you have the two ladies leaving the restaurant, well, that is the moment where they get attacked by a vampire. Now, this is actually a huge moment. And the reason why, because you have both ladies realize that the other person knows about vampires. Now, when it comes to Brielle's mom, yeah, 
it makes a lot of sense because she did marry Blade and they had a child together. Except for Brielle, it's kind of like, how do you know about vampires? What in the world is going on? Now, when it comes to Brielle's mom, she was trained by Blade. And so she knows how to defend her daughter against vampires. And she kills the one off just like that. But now it's time for the conversation. Except that conversation never comes. And the reason why? Because Brielle's mom is not ready to have that conversation yet with Brielle. But on top of that, we get the idea that Brielle still has no idea who her father is. The only thing she knows is that her dad is some brother because she saw a picture of him. And that's it, really. And so she's wondering, okay, why in the world are vampires coming after me? Now, when it comes to Brielle, there's also a big question. How do you know about vampires? And she tells her mom about her powers, except that her powers only work at night, but sometimes only works on a certain kind of night. Like some nights her powers work, other nights her powers don't work. And so she's very confused. But again, Brielle's mom is not ready to have that conversation to explain why vampires are coming after her for. But the next day we do see Brielle go to school. Now, when she does go to school, it gives us the ability to see two of her friends, Jaden and also Rebecca. Now, when it comes to her two friends, they also have no idea about what's going on with Brielle. And again, that kind of makes sense because she has no idea what in the world is going on with her. Now, with that being said, that is the moment her class gets a new student and her name is Whitney. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat that Whitney is going to be very important for the overall story. Now, when it comes to Brielle, she knows that it could be somewhat hard to be the new kid in the school. And so she tries to be Whitney's friend. Unfortunately, Whitney is kind of, you know, a bad word, I guess. I don't know. Because she's like, I don't like you. I don't want to know you. Please leave me alone. Goodbye. And I'm kind of like... Dang, cold shoulder right off the bat. But you have Brielle saying, you know what? Fine, I'll leave her alone. Now, when it comes to her friends, they're wondering, hey, are we still on for tonight? But unfortunately, you have Brielle say no. And the reason why? Because she has to handle some other kind of business that her mom does not even know as well. And that is when we come to find out that Brielle is going vampire hunting. Now, we also come to find out that this is not her first time doing this. Matter of fact, after her powers had manifest the first time, she has been trying her best to figure out one, about her powers, but two, why are these vampires coming after her? And so she does go over to an abandoned house. Now, when she does arrive, that is the moment where she is attacked by some random other person. Now, at first, you would believe that it would be a vampire who is coming after her but unfortunately it is not a vampire it's a human but as the fight goes on well we kind of find out who is the other person it's Whitney the new kid in her class and the question is right now why is she trying to come after uh Brielle for but then we have to jump over to Blade. Now, when we do, it's really more Blade just, you know, killing off vampires left and right. A usual Tuesday for him. Now, while doing this, well, that is the moment where he gets a phone call. Now, when it comes to his phone conversation, we get the idea that he had another assignment to handle, but unfortunately, he has to cancel that other assignment. And the reason why? because he got a call about his daughter and what she is going through, which means it's time for Blade to go be a father and help his daughter understand the world that he lives in. Now, that is when we jump into the second chapter. Now, when we do, we actually pick up with Brielle still fighting against Whitney. Now, while you have the two characters fighting against each other, that is when we come to find out 
why Brielle is being attacked by Whitney because we come to find out that Whitney is actually a vampire hunter. And the thing is, she got word that Brielle is part vampire. Now, with that being said, guys, we have to remember that Brielle is still kind of learning about herself, about her powers, about the idea of what she could possibly be. She has no idea that she's actually a vampire and so why you have Whitney trying to attack her is Brielle saying hey stop I have no idea what in the world is currently going on now here's the thing because as the fight goes on Brielle goes into some kind of frenzy because she's a vampire she wants blood now again she's only part vampire but that small part still wants to have some blood to drink and so because the battle went on for so long it kind of put Brielle in this kind of rage this frenzy looking for blood now once you have Brielle calm down well, she blacked out completely when she had entered that rage mode. Either way, the house they're in is beginning to burn down. And on top of that, the police are about to arrive. And so the two characters have no choice but to go their separate ways. Now, the next day at school, we do see Brielle go to meet up with Whitney to kind of get the idea of what in the world is going on with that character. Like, hey, how in the world are you a vampire hunter? How did you know that I was a vampire? Now, here's the thing. When it comes to Brielle's conversation with Whitney at the school, we don't get all that information. Instead, you have Whitney apologize for attacking Brielle. And she said, listen, after you and I had a little fight right there, I kind of realized the possibility that you might be different from the other vampires, possibly a good vampire. But if you're out there also hunting vampires, maybe you and I can team up with one another. And so it kind of seems like Brielle now has a new friend. Now she does say yes, except she then had to say no. And the reason why, because she got grounded last night for coming home so late after their battle. Now, thankfully with Whitney being there, she was able to kind of smooth things over with Brielle's mom to allow Brielle to come out the night to have the two of them work together and go hunt some vampires together. Now when it comes to our two characters, they do meet up at a nest for vampires, meaning that that particular building they're in right now will have a huge amount of vampires currently hiding inside of it. Now when it comes to Whitney and also Brielle, they're going to team up and try to work together to, well of course, try to kill off some vampires in this building. Now while you have the two ladies talking to one another, we kind of learn a tad bit more about Whitney. And she tells us that her parents died 10 years ago but after that she was taken in by a hunter now after that you have the two characters try to bond with one another to understand one another except here comes the problem every other moment you have whitney cutting her hand in the most obvious kind of way where of course blood would come out of those cut wounds and she's trying to see how Brielle is going to act because when it comes to Whitney she had heard about the idea that there are people out there who are half human half vampire or in Brielle's case part vampire either way even half and part vampires might be drawn to blood if blood is nearby and so what is whitney trying to do is prove that brielle is just like the other kind of vampires monsters and she is trying to keep bringing out her blood to make brielle go crazy and say okay now I have the right to kill you. But Brielle is in control because of her human side. Either way, once you have Whitney realize her plan is not going to work, she kicks Brielle into another room and that room is full of vampires. Now luckily for Brielle, her father arrives. Blade comes in all like, hey, 
What's up, y'all? I'm here to protect my daughter. And he does that for her. But the problem is, all the blood that he is spilling is going to her head, beginning to unlock her rage once again, her bloodlust once again, because she's still new to the idea of being part vampire. And so while you have Blade killing off all these random vampires, and once he is ready to check up on his daughter when he turns around, well, homegirl is getting ready to attack Blade, her own father. And so as we dive into the third chapter, well, we kind of find out it doesn't take Blade that much to actually defeat Brielle. Matter of fact, he's able to just talk to his daughter to calm her down like, hey, listen, I know right now that bloodlust in your mind is making you go crazy, but listen to my voice, calm down. And just like that, she calms down and Blade is able to take his daughter back home. Now, once you have Brielle wake up after passing out, well, that is when she is confronted by her mom at first, who feels very relieved about the idea that her daughter is okay, except that is when you have Brielle being confronted by her father. And of course, that would be Blade. Now, when it comes to Brielle, she has a lot of questions mainly about the idea of, is she a vampire? And when it comes to Blade, he tells her, you are a vampire because I'm half vampire, half human. And so a part of me became part of you. Now she does give Blade his entire origin, but honestly, I'm going to ignore that for now. And on top of that, when it comes to the idea of Blade explaining why he was not around for his daughter, it's literally everything I told you at the very beginning of this video about the idea that because of who he is in the world he lives in, it was best for him to leave his daughter behind hoping that she'll be protected. Now, there is something else I do want to mention. Around this point in time, Doctor Strange is dead. And that right there is very important. And the reason why? Because Blade made a deal with Doctor Strange to put some kind of magical barrier around uh, his daughter to say, I want to make sure Brielle does not get found by any kind of vampires or other kind of magic users who might try to use her as a way to get to me. And so Strange was able to put that barrier around her. But he died. And so that could explain the idea of why all these vampires are beginning to find her and come after her to get to him. Now, with that being said, when it comes to Blade, he also heard that Brielle does have powers, powers that are similar to him. The problem is, though, those powers are not working properly. And so when it comes to Blade, he's kind of like, okay, I have to train you not to learn how to use your powers, but how to protect yourself just in case your powers are not there to help protect you. And so this is going to begin her training session. But before he goes around and train his daughter, he begins to go around town to gather information about Whitney. Because yes, you do have teenagers do some crazy things like hunting down vampires. But the thing is, most teenagers unfortunately do not survive those kind of situations. Except Whitney has been. She has been going around killing all vampires left and right. And so that is not normal. And so when it comes to Blade, he wants to know more about Whitney. And so he goes around asking different vampires if they have any kind of information about Whitney, this teenage vampire hunter. But unfortunately, they don't have much. All they know is that some of their friends or loved ones have been killed off by Whitney. But after that, you didn't have Lay begin the process of training his daughter. And matter of fact, I kind of like this a lot. And I know we see this so often, but it's still kind of cool to see, you know, a father or mother train their child to one day possibly take up their mantle. Now, I don't see Marvel trying to, at this point in time, trying to remove Blade and to have Brielle become the new Blade because we do have that Blade movie coming out very soon. And I feel like Marvel 
maybe had learned their lesson when it came to the 2010s when it came to replacing characters but again we don't know and so with that being said when it comes to blade after he trained his daughter he said listen i got word that there are a bunch of teenage hunters out there hunting vampires and they don't care who might possibly get in the middle of the crossfire, which means that I have to make sure that you are ready to protect yourself, but to protect your mother and possibly your friends as well. Now, I got word of who could be in charge of the entire operation. I myself is going to handle him. I want you to just be ready to handle his minions. Now, we do jump over to Saffron. Now, when it comes to Saffron, she is the wife of Blade, but the mother of Brielle. I just realized this entire video, I have not been calling her by her name. And I feel really bad about that because when it comes to Saffron, she's been around for a very long time. Either way, when it comes to Saffron, when she does go home, well, unfortunately, she is confronted by somebody else who had broke into her house, and that would be the character Deacon. Now, getting into the fourth chapter, we do pick up with Brielle and Blade coming back home. Now, this at first is a great moment. And the reason why, because Brielle is actually able to be happy around her father. They're celebrating the idea that they had a great training session. And so at first, this is a great moment. But of course, it turns into a sad moment because once they do go inside the house, well, that is the moment they find out that Serfran was taken by Deacon. Now, when it comes to Deacon, he plays a very important role when it comes to the origin of Blade. Let me explain. So when it came to Deacon, he was a scientist who was trying to find a way to live forever, immortality. Now, when it came to the different kinds of experiments one of them involved vampire blood now he did kidnap a young girl named lisa and he tried to inject that blood into her body the problem was her boyfriend appeared and got in a fight with deacon now while the two characters were fighting against each other well unfortunately he got injected with the vampire blood which did turn him into a vampire now this also gave him an ability where Every single time he bites someone, he is able to create a double ganger of that person. Either way, when it came to Deacon, after becoming a vampire, he ran into Blade's mother. Now, originally, she was pregnant with Blade, and she needed some help with her pregnancy. She went over to Deacon who was supposed to be a well-known doctor. The problem was he was a vampire who bit her, which of course gave our boy Blade his half-vampire side. Either way, Deacon plays a very important role. Here's the problem though. Deacon died back in 2018 in a Falcon book. And so we already know right off the bat, most likely this is just one of his clones out there that believes that he is actually the real Deacon. Or it's one of those clones out there that knows it is a clone but still believes it's just good enough as the original Deacon. But when it comes to Blade, he knows that he cannot take his daughter out there to find her mother to find the woman he loves. He's kind of like, listen, I need you to stay behind. I need you to make sure that you stay somewhere safe. Stay over a friend's house. Do not tell them what's going on. But let me tell you this right now. You are not going to be alone. Meaning that I'm coming back for you with your mom or without your mom. But I'm not going to leave you again. And so Blay has no choice but to say goodbye to his daughter and to hopefully find the woman that he loves so much. Now when she does go to school the next day, she tries her best to play it off. But her friends kind of know there must be something going on with her but again it is brielle saying i cannot tell them what in the world is currently going on with me now 
Here's the thing, they do bump into Whitney, and by this point right now, her and Whitney, they have bad blood between each other. Because one, Whitney is a teenage vampire hunter who had tried to kill off Riel, not once, but twice now. But at the same time, there is a possibility that maybe Whitney has something to do with, well, Brielle's mom being kidnapped. And so it's Brielle saying, you know what, I'm going to follow her. I'm going to figure out if Whitney kidnapped my mother. If she did, this person is going down today in the school. And so the way you have Brielle find out is she follows Whitney into the bathroom. Now, once you have the two characters go in the bathroom, you didn't have Brielle call her mom's phone number. And just like that, so Fran's phone begins to ring in Whitney's purse and that tells Brielle Whitney is involved when it comes to my mom being kidnapped and Brielle does not play around when it comes to her mother and so right off the bat you have Brielle begin to attack Whitney to go at her heart to hopefully defeat her to get her mom back the problem is though they're fighting in school and so this fight does not last that long before you have you know a teacher or a minister step in and say hey listen we heard fighting you to my office now but getting back over to blade you have blade being able to locate where those vampires who had most likely kidnapped Safan, of course being deacon over to a nearby cemetery now when you have blade arrive he is confronted by the clone of deacon frost now the reason why i say it's a clone because again the original frost died back in a falcon book back in like 2018 now again this is marvel comics so characters do not stay dead forever but it's the whole idea that hmm could this be the original one but blaze said no it's not him it's honestly a clone that believes to be the original of course deacon frost now when it comes to our hero he is ambushed from behind to the point where he is attacked to the point where he is knocked out and so now blade has also been taken hostage now getting back over to brielle real quickly we see her outside of school but she is confronted by her two best friends now this is the point where she has no choice she has to tell them what in the world is going on because they just saw her attack Whitney in the bathroom. Why in the world would she do that for? Now, when it comes to Brielle, she does not tell them anything at all right now. And the reason why, because she has to ask them for a favor to help her get away from the school to hopefully find her mother and father. And then on the way there, she'll be happy to tell them everything they need to know about her. But getting back over to Blade, we kind of see that Blade is now a hostage, but we also see that Safran is still a hostage and alive. Now, with that being said, though, we kind of find out what the clone of Deacon Frost is trying to do. And what I mean by that is his main goal is to do some kind of ritual where him and a group of vampires will gain the ability of Blade. See, when it comes to Blade, he's half human half vampire which of course gives him the ability to walk in the daytime and so with that being said when it comes to our clone here he wants to kind of take that power and give it to himself to give him and others the edge against their enemies now the problem is though the ritual does not work as well matter of fact it does not work at all like he was hoping it would. Now, here's the thing, because when it comes to Deacon, he feels like maybe he has the wrong, of course, person. Maybe he needs Blade's daughter to be able to actually pull off this ritual. Now, in the heat of the moment, Safran was able to get away, and Blade tells her, go to where we train at. Now that is very important because it's Blade hoping that Brielle will also go there as well and Brielle and her mom will be able to meet up there. Now when it comes to Deacon, he's all like, listen, we have no idea where they might go, but if we follow them, we might be able to ambush Serfan, but to also get Blade's daughter to hopefully complete our ritual. And so, 
when we do pick up with Riel, she's with her friends and her friends had just been confronted by, well, we have no idea who. And so then we jump into the final chapter. Now, when we do, we see that Brielle and her friends are being confronted by, well, her mother, Safran, who was able to get away. Now, here's the thing, though, because by this point, when it comes to Brielle, she has no choice but to go ahead and tell her friends everything about what in the world that is going on with her. Because in this chapter, in the last chapter, really, the entire book a lot of different things happen and so she has no choice and so she does she tells them everything they need to know now here's the thing because when it comes to Safran Brielle's mother she's all like listen I know Blade he'll find a way to get out of that tight situation except when it comes to Brielle she kind of wants to get revenge because one they kidnapped her mother and two they now have her father and three they're not going to stop coming after them until this whole entire situation is is actually handled. The problem is though, while you have Brielle trying to find different kind of weapons that could have been left behind by Blade, well, she is confronted by Whitney and some vampires who had came alongside with her. Now, when it comes to Brielle and Whitney, they do battle once again, except this time, it's Brielle using the skills that she was taught by her father to hopefully defeat Whitney and being able to go back and get her father and the day could be saved. Now, when you have Whitney and Brielle fighting against each other, it's also Brielle wanting Whitney to realize about her adoptive father because we kind of find out her adoptive father wanted to Corinne and that taught her the hunting ways was the clone of Deacon. Deacon Frost, the one who's right now trying to do some kind of ritual with Blade is her adoptive father. But on top of that, she believes that her adoptive father was going to give her some kind of power that would give her the ability to hunt down all vampires across the world. Because we have to remember, her biological parents were killed off by vampires. And so this is her saying like, no, I need to go ahead and get this ability to get my revenge. And if I have to work with someone who is a vampire, but who had taught me the ways of how to hunt down vampires to get what I want, then I'll do what I have to do. But you have Brielle say, your adoptive father was not going to give you any kind of power at all. He was trying to pull off some kind of ritual to make him and some others around him stronger. Now, you do have Brielle being able to defeat Whitney, but now her goal is to save her father. Except when we do jump over to Blade, we see that Blade is currently in a bloodlust frenzy, a bloodlust rage, like we saw earlier when it came to Brielli. And so right now you have Blade just going all over the place, killing off vampires left and right. He's in full rage mode. Now here's the thing. Deacon is actually enjoying this a lot. And the reason why? Because when it comes to Blade acting like this, Blade can no longer say that he is different. See, when it comes to Blade, he put himself on a higher pedestal. Kind of like, hey, you know what? I'm only half vampire, half human, but I can control my hunger for blood. But on top of that, I can walk in the daytime. Now, with all that being said, with Blade acting like this right now, He's just like other vampires. And so the Deacon, he is just another monster. Now, when it comes to Brielle, she does arrive with Whitney. Now, guys, remember, Deacon, the clone of Deacon, is the adoptive father of Whitney. And so it's Brielle saying, I have your daughter here. If you want her back, you are going to have to help my father and calm him down, but to let us go. Kind of like a bargaining chip. But the problem is Deacon does not care about Whitney at all because he was just using her as a way to achieve 
something down the road, this ritual that he was trying to achieve. And so once you have Riel, and unfortunately Whitney realized that this man did not care for her at all, it's kind of like, okay, that is a problem. Now, Brielle is able to calm down Blade. And once she's able to do that, you do have the two characters work together and they do go ahead and attack Deacon to the point where they are able to kill him off. And matter of fact, this is Brielle's first kill. And so Blade had, had to help her out with the idea of killing someone off like that. Now, once that's done, the day is saved and now they can go back home and relax. Now, to wrap up today's video, you do have Brielle, her parents, and her friends being able to actually hang out with one another. Now, with that all being said, it does lead into the idea of Brielle being able to go on her own adventures, to be a hero out there in the world. And so, this is going to be her beginning, the starting point for her. And honestly, that is the end for today's video. So please, leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.